Hello everyone, Eric with Ham Radio Concept. Still playing with the 7300 here. Wanted to show you some cool features in the last few videos that you can do with this, but to also answer some questions of people that have said, Eric, your 7300 looks the same on the screen as it did when you took it out of the box. It doesn't look like you've changed any of the scope or filtering options to find weak signals or to look like someone else's radio. Well, the thing is, there's so many different ways you could tailor this screen and filtering to find weak signals. That's what makes it a powerful radio. If I haven't mentioned this before, this is radio is very powerful because of the filtering and the options to locate weak signals. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my display and show you as an example on what I can do on a certain band to change up the scope and to find weak signals better on my screen. Now, the way I do this doesn't necessarily mean this is the way it's done. We're just going to walk through it and change some stuff to show you how I can make this different. Some people don't use the audio scope. Fine. We're going to take that out of there. Okay? Get that out of there. Now, if you're on this screen, this is your frequency and your spectrum and waterfall. It's real small on the bottom, right? So what I can do to make that bigger to see is to click this expand button right here. Just tap it. Boom. That made your waterfall a lot bigger, right? But there's a lot of clutter up here. And yeah, I can get an idea of where the stations are on here, but there's a lot more powerful than that, especially on a noisy band. We're going to go to 15 meters and watch what happens on 15 meters. Look at all the noise I have. It comes and goes, okay, and it'll blank the waterfall out, and it makes it hard uh, to hear, and there's a lot of static. You know, sometimes it's not there, then other times like this, it's there, okay, and that makes it real tough to see. So what we'll do in this band right here is I'm going to change this up. The first thing to notice is on the back of the spectrum scope, there's like a light blue, or a call it gray, uh, hold there, a peak hold, and that shows a peak of that station and the signal that they had in the scope. But then you look over here, there's this little tiny trace here. And if you have a lot of noise, you may miss that guy right here if you're looking for weak signals. So what I'm going to do is first, we're going to go into the expand set menu, hold that, and that's going to take you to four different pages of attributes you can change to tailor your experience on the radio and filtering. Now, the first thing that we just talked about was the max hold. I'm going to take that off. That's You can do off 10 second hold and it updates or leave it on all the time. We're going to turn that off because I don't think I want to hold on at the moment. But what you can see is now if a station was here and they transmitted for one second, that hold would be there. But now it only shows me the immediately available signals on that screen without the hold in the background. Now the next thing I'm going to do with all this wide signal here or a lot of noise is I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to go down to page uh, two waveform type we're going to go fill plus line so that's going to have a line for the signal and it's going to fill it in okay then the next thing is the waveform color so I'm going to do the current is going to be I'm going to change that for instance to uh, black like this all the way down we're going to turn that black okay and in page three I'm going to change the line to green because green looks pretty cool and then the max hold color I'm going to change that to black now just with that right there watch what happens you see what it did it took all that mess and turned it into a nice solid green line with a black holding, you know, black background in there so that it makes it a little bit easier to find peaks. Now look, this guy stands out a little more, okay? And you can see there's a couple stations. Now, to further that, let's knock out some of the noise on the screen so that we can see only the signal. So, right here you got one, this is, you know, menu one here, and this is menu two. So we're going to go to reference here. The reference level, I'm going to turn that down because I have noise. And watch what happens. Look at this. Now what that just did was knocked out all that hash and it's only showing me the peaks of the signals that are there. That makes it a lot easier to see on a noisy waterfall. Okay, and 
that makes those stand out. Now if we go back into expand set here and we go to the waterfall speed, we can change that to fast or slow. We could also make the waterfall size bigger. Now look at that. Okay, you can see on here a little tiny peak here, there's a peak here, a couple peaks. Those are actually stations on there. All right. It makes it a lot easier to see. And if I turn the reference up just a little bit, it makes them stand out just a little bit more. I want to turn it up until the white, the, the, the static starts coming back. See? I want to get rid of that static like this. That looks about good. And that just took out all that noise. The noise is still there. But it's showing me the peaks of the signals there and where they're talking. I think I like the waterfall size to be mid. That way I get a little bit more scope and a little bit less waterfall. I think that's where it's at. Now, uh, another cool thing you can do with this is notice, you know, when you scroll here, you don't know, you know, kind of where you are, right? This is like uh, 25 kilohertz this way, 25 kilohertz this way from the center. But watch this. I could also go to span and now I can change the span wider now it's 50 kilohertz on each side of my center 100 250 500 okay or 2.5 so if I really want to narrow it down to just that guy wherever he may be see now you're on a really really small span here let's open it up a little bit that way we can see these guys okay now, another thing you could do is center fix here. Now watch this. Now I have a, a line here so I can see exactly where I am in the entire band. Look, 21.21450. That's the entire band all the way across from one end to the other. And I could use the little green line here to go right where I want to go like this. And if I really want to zoom in to see that, I could tap on it. Okay, and I can see exactly where I am. Alright. And see that, that line going up and down? That's the noise I have somewhere around here. It's coming from somewhere I don't know. But right there on that screen, you can see it changes, and you can see a lot more uh, across the entire band, and even zoom in if I go to back to, uh, let's see, take the center fix off and go to span. You know, 10 kilohertz each side, 25, and I can go like this and find contacts easier on a noisier band. Well, let's look at what this looks like on 20. Ready? Go back to 20. I don't have so much noise on 20, so the reference is really low, and that's blocking out a lot of the signal. So I'm going to take the reference back up. Now look. You see? Now that's taken and it's only showing me the peaks of where all the signals are. And if you like different colors, you can change different colors. Let's go in here and see if there's anything else. Um, you can go up to averaging. Now the averaging, without being able to define it, watch what it does. It kind of makes it a, a softer... Um, a, a slower, what would you call that? Like a AL, uh, AGC? It, it makes it so it, it's it's a slower peak here so you can see it without it being real spiky, which I kind of like it this way, but you have four different options here. If I turn it down to two, it's a little bit faster. You see? And then if you turn it off, see? it's real quick. So leaving it on averaging will kind of give you a softer uh, image of the peaks that are going up and down on the uh, on the waterfall and also if we go here to um, center type display we'll turn that with right here now what that's going to do is you see the frequency on the bottom here now look the whole scope moves check that out and you see right here where you're at and where the... So if I put the scope here, okay, you can see that this guy right here is right at 14.280. So that's pretty cool. That kind of makes it look a little more uh, fun and different. 
on the screen. But that's cool that it it moves the whole waterfall here, the entire thing, and it lines up the frequencies on the bottom with where the signals are on the scope. Pretty cool, but, but watch this. I'm gonna go in the menu, I'm gonna do a reset. Do a partial reset, and let's see what it looks like on that waterfall now that I just wiped out all those settings. All right, we'll turn the scope on, we'll turn the audio scope on. We'll even just leave the scope on, expand it, there. Now that's what it would look like when we go back to 15 meters. That's what it looked like before. Um, and there's the noise coming in, see? So, definitely ways to tailor the screen to help you out. Now, if, you, if you're talking about CW, let's go like this. Let's go back to 20 meters, go down to CW portion. All right. So there's a whole bunch of little CWs. Now watch, we're going to do this again. We're going to go to, um, we'll take um, max hold off. And I'll take averaging, I'll put that on number two. I'll do fill plus line on waveform. I'll take the waveform color to green, or to black. And I'll make the line green. And I'll make the max hold fill black. Okay. Now look, they stand right out, you see? The little CW guys, they stand out. I shouldn't say little CW guys. But we'll turn the reference down a little bit. Take some of the noise out. Okay, now watch. We're going to CW. Go down here. And you can see the CW stations there. All the noise is gone. All you're seeing is them. If you want to change the filter up here, you can narrow it down, make the filter real narrow. Then you could use here to shift to stay away from the guy next to him. Okay. Now I'm not much of a CW expert as far as finding, uh, you know, filtering and, and finding CW stations that are way out in the distance, but you can see here that it kind of makes them pop right out. There's a guy over here. Where was he at? Look at this guy. Okay, and then we could also uh, make the waterfall faster. Now it's real quick, see? But I like how the averaging, you see, it gives it a little more time to pop up on that scope. If I turn the averaging off, it kind of just disappears. Check it out. See? Real quick. I like having the averaging on, so it's uh, do three. So they kind of pop in there and give you a second to see them. Now, I'm not so noisy. I can probably turn the reference up a little bit more. Just so that I don't get, see that's that's what, if you turn the reference all the way up, there's your, your noise floor there. So it makes the waterfall on the bottom brighter, but it brings all the noise up up here. So I'm gonna take that down like this. There you go, see? And you can spot all those little guys on CW here on the waterfall. And then we can go to, this pen's in my way. Uh, we can go to ABS frequency here. Now we got the frequency in the bottom, the whole thing moves. There's your FT8. All right, so that, that pretty much uh, gives you an idea of what you can do with the scope and how it makes it easier to find signals. Uh, and there's probably a lot more you can do than I haven't done yet on what I just showed you, but it's an idea to show you how to change that waterfall and make it so that you see the CW station and the little tiny things that aren't on your scope, you can dial them in, uh, zoom them in and find them so that uh, you never miss a contact when you're an extreme contest uh, hunter or an extreme country collector right here on the map, on the scope here makes it a lot easier on the 7300. 
73 guys, thanks for watching. KJ4YZI.